Next, from Springfield, we attend a press conference with disability and senior advocates highlighting what they believe will be the negative human and economic consequences of Governor Rauner's plan changes to the determination of need assessment. This runs about 15 minutes. Um, the next speaker is our uh, Lori Hendren of AARP Illinois. <coughs> Thank you. My name is Lori Hendren. I'm the Associate State Director for AARP in Illinois. I'm here speaking on behalf of the 24,005 CCP clients across the state who are facing the loss of service and care in their homes and to be able to continue living with their families. We know the governor has the intentions to strike individuals between 29 and 36 of the Don score. And we stand beside our, our partners here today and Representative Greg Harris for putting forth this measure. This measure is needed. We need to keep these individuals at home. They are part of our community. They're able to live with their families. And recently, we were honored to have Mary and John Schnell. They've been married 65, almost 66 years, a powerful couple. He served in the uh, Marine Corps Reserves, and they live together because of CCP. He's on the cusp. He's about at a 35, I believe, and suffers from dementia. But he's able to stay in his home with his wife because of this program. The cost to the state to keep him in is around $350 a month. And without this program, Mary, his primary caregiver and wife of many years, said they will have to separate homes and he'll be placed in a nursing home is a real possibility. This bill before us is not only a cost-saving measure, it's nonpartisan. It's a smart bill to keep Illinois moving in the best direction forward and caring in a compassionate way and keeping individuals with independence and with their best welfare. So I applaud everyone here. One more thing I think needs to be, I can't reiterate enough, the trickle effect of this is powerful. When these individuals leave their homes, they can have the premature nursing home placement, but also the CCU and providers in the fields can lose jobs at a state, at a point where Illinois is climbing its way back up to have viability as a state and in the nation. We need jobs. CCP is a program that brings jobs in rural areas and also in, in northern suburbs and Chicago. So I can't stress enough the importance for Republicans and Democrats to stand together, the governor to listen to not only the physical savings this bill offers, but also the passion and the dignity that is allowed to continue by keeping individuals in their homes. So on behalf of ARP, we thank everyone for their leadership and they continue their support and to put this desk, this bill on the governor's desk. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lori. Uh, our, our next speaker is Mr. Robert Taylor, who is a home care worker. Thank you. Um, my name is Robert Taylor and I'm a veteran of the United States Air Force. I've also worked in the food industry as well as the truck driving industry. And it was at that time when I had to take a refresher course at Lincoln Land University in order to uh, become eligible to be hired again to drive a truck. It had been a while since I'd been in a truck. It was at this time that my girlfriend suffered a stroke. She had two aneurysms that were bleeding. So they coiled both of them. So traumatic brain injury times two. Um, it was a difficult time for me, um, day to day for six weeks in the hospital, um, not knowing you know, what the day would bring. Um, by the grace of God, she made it through um, home services program as a personal assistant. Um, at the time, I knew nothing about the program, didn't know it exists. So I was very thankful to find out that I would be able to earn a paycheck at the same time that she would be able to get the care that she needed in our home as opposed to a nursing home. Um, it was difficult because um, the things that are involved with a traumatic brain injury are from the, the moment you wake up, she needs help getting out of bed, she needs help preparing, eating breakfast, um, she helps doing some of the menial household chores, but taking a shower, um, getting dressed, 
these are types of things that a stranger would have to do for her if it were not for the home services program that allows me to be there for her. Um, and it would be the same for thousands of others in the same situation. Other consumers are able to keep their self-esteem, keep their self-respect, keep dignity that I know all of us would want to have put in the same situation. Having a stranger help you with some of your most intimate tasks of daily living would be quite an adjustment. So thank you for the Home Services Program for being there, uh, for allowing me to be a taxpaying citizen, to allowing her the satisfaction, the comfort level of knowing that she's got someone there that actually cares for her and that uh, she's comfortable with. I speak for not only myself, but as others have re reiterated, uh, thousands of people across the state. Thousands of people just like me who won't be able to be a taxpayer anymore, won't be able to pay rent or utilities. For the consumers, thousands of consumers just like my girlfriend who will not be eligible for services anymore. Don't know what they do. Homeless shelter comes to mind. Nursing homes are not an option. Um, fiscally, it's irresponsible for the state of Illinois to, to make nursing homes an option as opposed to the home services program. So in closing, I just want to say that good, bad things happen to good people and that we cannot afford to have any cuts or raise the Don score to the home services program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Just a few quick facts as we uh, wrap up. I want to point out that um, Innovation Illinois came out with a caregiver's impact report that I hope that people are paying attention to that shows that for every $1 that is invested in home services in the state of Illinois, $2.74 is, gen uh, is generated in economic activity. So the idea of cutting home services means hurting the economy of Illinois by taking dollars out of our state. And I think that this is something that people who want to grow our state and attract jobs and grow our economy should be paying attention to. $1 and then $2.74 in effect might not seem like a whole lot, but um, in fiscal year 2013, Illinois invested over a billion dollars in general revenue funds and home services. So that's over a billion dollars basically generating over two billion dollars in economic activity in the state of Illinois. So I hope people who are wanting to take Illinois forward towards the future are paying attention to these facts. And uh, we have a handout that shows the caregiver's impact report that you can visit online. I, do, I do want to reiterate that the bill that we're talking about is House Bill 972, Floor Amendment 1. Uh, filed by Representative Greg Harris. I would also like to point out that supportive living will also be affected by the Don Square change if it's changed from 29 to 37. Um, 4,000 people statewide in supportive living settings would be affected by the Don Square change. And they would not have any other options. Thank you to Wayne from the supportive living. If you would like to talk to Wayne after the press conference, he's the guy in the pink shirt, you can do that. But also I'd like to give a shout out to Equip for Equality, the legal organization looking out for the rights of people with disabilities in Illinois, and in particular, the right to live in the community. They're represented by Cheryl Jansen, who's in the black and the white dress in the corner over there. So if uh, people have any questions, we would be happy to take any questions at this time. Thank you for coming. No questions. Isn't there, uh, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't there going to be a change in the determination of need coming up in like October at the federal level? Yeah, so that, that's a really good question. Uh, the state of Illinois has drafted an application to the federal government to change the determination of need score from 29 to 37. Public input uh, was accepted until July 18th, and at this point in time, presumably the state is uh, compiling the public input and then crafting their final submission to the federal government. They can do that at any time. This question about October that people seem to, to wonder about, October 1st is the first date past uh, the state's balancing incentives program initiative. So the, 
when people start talking about October, that has to do with a, a grant that the state has gotten from the federal government that includes developing the universal assessment tool. The universal assessment tool is supposed to be implemented as of October 1st. It seems that that, according to the state's testimony at previous hearings, that might not happen right on time, but that's why people have asked about October 1st, why is that an important date? Can the dawn be changed at that time? And th the reality is that because of requirements with the balancing incentives program, you could not change the dawn until that time. Part of the program said that you had to keep the dawn as it was until October 1st. But as of October 1st, you could go ahead and change it. But I think that people need to be very clear that just because you are developing a new universal assessment tool doesn't mean you get to change the dawn. The do changing the dawn is a separate process and it requires an amendment to Illinois' Medicaid state plan, that's why. So the universal assessment tool is just one part of one grant. So I hope that's not too wonky, but that would be the answer mm -hmm. to the question. Um, yeah. Is mm -hmm. changing the Don score part of a bipartisan bill a few years ago that was passed with mm -hmm. health and Democrats? Wasn't that essentially the problem? Yeah, that, that it, changing the Don was, uh, Okay, so the SMART Act of 2012 allowed the state of Illinois to go ahead and apply to the federal government to change the Don score specifically from 29 to 37. If they got federal approval, then Illinois could move forward with changing the Don. As Representative Harris pointed out this morning in committee, uh, the SMART Act was really an emergency budget measure for 2012. And so what made sense in 2012 does not necessarily make sense in 2015, nor does it really make sense going forward with the state of Illinois, given that we have increasing numbers of people with disabilities, increasing numbers of seniors, and what we should really be looking at is how do we design an infrastructure that supports people to their best ability in the community or assistive assist living as much as they possibly can. And uh, that requires separate efforts other than the Don score. We need to stop talking about the Don score and start focusing on community-based services. So, The governor wants to cut cost. Do, do, your, do you all as a community have any suggestions of where there might be savings that could be achieved without harming those who need uh, home care? Do you want to speak to that? I would, I would offer that if the governor, um, his administration, we're happy to sit down with Governor Rauner. Um, we won't negotiate this in the press. We have the lives of thousands of people. Let me and, interrupt him. Yeah. I don't mean necessarily negotiate. A lot of times in industries, people go, mm -hmm. boy, if you'd ask the guy on the floor, he could tell the management how to save some dollars. Mm -hmm. Are there any ideas floating around that you would all go, here's an obvious thing you could do that would save money but not impact negatively those who are getting the aid? I would say he should call the advocates and have a discussion with us so we could have um, a full discussion. And then I think it also something is we have, we have worked to get FOIA information to understand, and we FOIA'd uh, the governor's office, GOMB, Department of Aging, HFS, to understand the numbers that have brought forth to come to where the governor was in his June 19th, um, 1915 C waiver. And we're still waiting on getting that information. So again, to be able to discuss, we want to see the information they have brought forth, and we're happy to have a discussion with the governor and the leaders when that time comes. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me also add, uh, the state of Illinois is fully capable of making decisions that don't make fiscal sense. For example, right now we spend $472 million a year on state-operated developmental centers that serve 1,700 people. Give me $472 million and let's spend it on home and community-based services and see how many people we can serve. Uh, basically, the home services program, it costs about half a billion dollars in, in general revenue, right? So if we can serve 30,000 people with about half a billion dollars, why are we serving 1,700 with 472 million? And, and who are the 1,700? Uh, the, the 1,700 people are the residents of the state-operated developmental centers. So these are people with developmental disabilities that live in large congregate settings that are run by the state of Illinois in seven different institutions. So that, that's a question. Why are we spending so much money on those facilities and the homes and the community-based services sector is begging for dollars to make sure that people can stay in their own homes? That's a question. But as Lori said, we'd be happy to talk about ways to save money or find dollars for home and community-based services. 
we have proposed to the state of Illinois to, to look at their Medicaid waiver system. For example, there's a waiver uh, that Illinois could apply for that could bring enhanced federal match dollars rather than bringing in 50% federal dollars matched to Medicaid programs, it could bring in 56%. That 6%, we could use it. But Illinois has not heard our call to apply for that particular waiver program. So we would be happy to discuss the options with anybody from the administration that would like that. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. 